India has made significant strides by leveraging digital public infrastructure, DPI, to advance technology and provide digital solutions at scale which benefits people. DPI, in fact, affects our day-to-day -day life, whether it be in education, in health, and in mobility. But what is this DPI? What is digital public infrastructure? How can we leverage to solve problems at scale? And what are some of the challenges to really roll out this solution in different sectors? I am Pavan Mulukutla, Executive Director of Integrated Transport, Clean Air and Hydrogen Program at WRI India. Joining me today is Sujit Nair, CEO of FIDE, the founder and you know, co-creator of Beckon Protocol, on which is based ONDC and your Namayatri and many other users today. We'll be talking with Sujit Nair to understand some of these basic things on what DPI means to us and how is it going to really change our lives. Thank you, Sujit, for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you um, on this conversation. I just wanted to start by asking, you know, we keep hearing about digital public infrastructure, DPI, and uh, at recently held G7, the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, was also appreciated for India taking a lead in the uh, digital public infrastructure um, within India and around the globe. Can you just explain us in simple language, what does DPI really mean? Sure. But firstly, Pawan, thank you for having me here. It's always great to be back at, at your office. Uh, I still reminisce my early days of my meetings at the beginning of Beckin. But on your question of DPI, and firstly, I think DPI is a, a relatively new term. For me, it's, it's essentially a way of thinking, mm -hmm. which kind of takes a departure from the, the generally prevalent way of thinking about digital, digital solutions. And it kind of takes a different mental model um, to sort of think and apply DPI. Um, as the name suggests, it stands for infrastructure, this is public infrastructure. There are two sort of form of thinkers mm. in this space. One who think about infrastructure and one who think about solutions. And, and thinking about infrastructure requires a different sort of a mental model. Imagine if uh, you wanted to build a car, mm -hmm. uh, think of car as a solution or, or offer a school bus or a bicycle and you wanted to offer that and then if there was no common infrastructure like roads, so just like how roads and water supply were necessary as common public good, which mm -hmm. everybody can share openly and it's available to all, is necessary to bring in the solutions that uses infrastructure, like school bus or a truck or a, or a car, sort of is the key difference between infrastructure and solutions. And that is the sort of differentiation we are trying to bring mm -hmm. into the digital world. But what infrastructure does is to solve for access. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did by putting some building blocks of DPIs or infrastructure since Aadhaar. Mm -hmm. So Aadhaar was sort of the beginning of that journey that India had. Then of course we had e-sign, UPI, fast tag, um, account aggregator. UPI is a perfect example of how India took inspiration from the historical designs of such DPIs like the internet, mm -hmm. like emails and created this new digital infrastructure in the form of a protocol which is extremely lightweight open standards which was then used by banks and private companies like Google, Amazon, Paytm to create these solutions for us to today literally make transactions which are so easy and frictionless. I mean today I can walk out and buy a tender coconut mm -hmm. using UPI Imagine that's an electronic payment India does at scale. We do 14 billion transactions a month. Wow. That's probably more than any biggest, largest card aggregator company does across the world in one day. We do the same numbers in a single day here, about 400 million transactions a day, 14 billion a month. So just you said something which sounded very interesting. You talked about, you know, I heard you talk, to, talk about standards and, you know, yeah. kind of alluding to protocols as well. So does that become the basis of how we look at DPI? Like, everyone adhering to you know creating Absolutely. certain common standards and protocols yeah. is that the fundamental block for a dpi to exist correct so i think what i've done through your previous question is to sort of make an effort to explain the concept of dpi mm -hmm. why dpi like why we need infrastructure in general as a public good we need digital infrastructure as a public good in the digital economy now if you, the next question we should ask in our mind is that okay i understand the why now let's ask what is the form of DPI mm -hmm. that should be in place. Yeah. 
and that that essentially that thinking makes you ask these questions first of all is it lightweight and minimal so mm -hmm. that it doesn't become too overbearing for a population scale adoption is it open open mm -hmm. as in open standards so that everybody can access not you know exclusive to few it's not proprietary is it interoperable because infrastructure has to allow multiple systems to talk to each other. It cannot be yeah. each system doing it in silence and there's no infrastructure. So it has to be by definition interoperable. Then in the world we are living in, can we also bake in elements of trust, data protection, security, privacy into the design? Hmm. So these are some of the features which goes into designing DPIs. And this eventually leads to DPI normally taking the form of standards, protocol standards and specifications uh, which is what internet is about internet is actually a collection of standards which everybody agreed to use when building their systems on internet so that idea therefore is uh, generally you'll see dpis being seen as protocols which are nothing but open specifications mm -hmm. uh, and and those protocols are what is leading to this large scale adoption. I had a question, actually what inspired you to get into this? Because I've read about Beckham protocol, we have interacted over many years yes. about what this protocol, but what got you into actually moving towards, you know, that a need for doing this? Because I remember talking to you way back, almost yeah. six, seven years back, right. and we started this journey with um, open standards, right? Yeah. Um, in fact, open data is what we were calling then. We were, yeah. You were testing even in Kochi, and I remember That's you right. talking about Beckham Protocol. What inspired really to get into this? So my inspiration was complete serendipity. I hope it's not me. <laughs> because many of you did inspire me to think about it in mobility for sure. But I think uh, my inspiration goes back to my serendipitious, you know, you know getting into the Aadha project mm -hmm. way back in 2009. When I, when I heard the vision of Nandan uh, starting the UIDI mm -hmm. initiative and then when I met people like, of course, uh, Pramod Verma, Sanjay Jain. But very early on, I realized when I joined this project, I realized that Aadhaar is actually an enabling infrastructure. Of course, it works like a typical system. It tells you who you are, it verifies who you are, but with that, but it doesn't stop there. It becomes the infrastructure on which today an EKYC for bank happens so that you can open a bank account or for a telecom connection or you can use that to verify and give you a, get, get you a loan. The fact that it is being used for multiple purposes and therefore the underlying thing becomes a common shared thing. That we did, I did not have the vocabulary in 2009 to call it, oh, this is infrastructure, but mm -hmm. I realized that there's this, this a way of thinking which is very different. So, Sujit, we were talking so far, you know, you had mentioned about backend protocol also, you know, and I also understand that, you know, applications like what we hear, Namayatri, ONDC actually are based upon backend protocol itself. So can you talk about, you know, in simple language, what this protocol is and what does it actually do and why is it so important? As I was saying earlier that, you know, DPIs are better when built with open standards, open standards like open protocols. And that's how internet was built. That's how UPI was built. And UPI is actually essentially an open protocol, a bunch of standards. Beckon is a similar such standards. In fact, if I were to take the analogy of UPI itself, firstly, thank you for the Teddy Coconut Water. We spoke about it and here it appears. Um, um, so just like how UPI enabled you and I mm -hmm. to exchange payments using mobile phones, uh, you don't see UPI, but you see a Google Pay or a Phone Pay or any of those UPI apps, that's what you talk to or interact with. But the way the money flows from mine to your, from my bank account to yours is through these UPI standards, the protocol. Similarly with Beckin, Beckin is a way for a consumer, uh, let's say I'm the consumer and, uh, and you are offering me some maybe food from a restaurant or offering me a ride. Um, the way we talk to each other, we could be on two different platforms and yet talk to each other, just like how email conversations happen. We can talk and exchange data in a way so that I can discover you. So can I simplify or if I'm oversimplifying to say, is it like a common language to do certain actions? It is a language to affect an economic transaction between a consumer and a provider mm -hmm. for any for availing certain service, any say. goods or services, service. any economic resource. Economic resource can be a ride, can be a journey ticket, could be a seat mm -hmm. in a carpool. 
I was just about to say because pretty much every platform must be following this model, right? Correct. So what makes backend special? Good point. So till now, t across the world, the implementation of this was all sort of enconced in one platform as a closed proprietary model. Okay. Now, if you take platforms like, and just as a way of example, an Amazon or a Flipkart or a Swiggy or a Zomato or a or a Uber or an Ola or an Airbnb, all of them sort of implemented this within one platform, which necessitated that there has to be an aggregator like them in mm -hmm. between, and the consumer and provider have to be on that platform. platform. So okay. a taxi provider has to be on the same platform where I as a rider is. So I need to be on the same platform. This is the model of aggregation that we have been used to. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is something that has taken off as a model on top of internet since the late 90s, you know, with rapid success of this technology solutions from Silicon Valley, like Amazon, Facebook, Uber, sort of kind of created this as the norm. With Beckin, mm -hmm. the question we were asking is, is there another model which can scale to population, open up the access to everybody without having to have anybody in the center? Mm 